June 16, 1976 was a Wednesday. It was a day much like it is today. Students from around Soweto marched to local authorities' offices in Boysens with one demand, abolish Afrikaans as a medium of instruction. What isn't often told though, is it's this school, Pefeni Junior Secondary School, that had been boycotting classes for months leading up to June 16. It's here where the protest started. And we had an opportunity to talk to the man who wrote this book about those days. His name is Professor Safiso Ndlovu. He was a 14-year-old boy at the time. And he tells us, after going into one of his classrooms for the first time in 1976, the story of this school and the role it played in the start of the uprising that marked June 16, 1976. Prof, you haven't been in a Pefeni Junior Secondary School classroom for any protracted length of time since 1976. I find that ex absolutely extraordinary. What does it feel like to be here? Yeah, it, it's bringing back memories to me, my childhood. Uh, because it's more than that when I think about it. Uh, I was a 14 year old then and it suddenly strikes my mind that that was the last time ever being in a classroom. It means I boycotted Bantu education. And that was the last time I've been in a classroom. I went to study at Tarot Correspondence College doing the O levels using the British system by correspondence. Now, when you think about it, a 14 year old taking such hard decision. I mean, if I can ask you, what were you preoccupied with as a 14 year old yourself? I can tell you, Safisa, I was not preoccupied with changing the political destination of my country, which is what you were involved in. I don't know. I was probably playing with my mates in the street. That would be it. Nothing deeper would have passed my brain. Then for me, it simply means then when I grow up, when I try to analyze and understand what we're doing, is that we were refusing to be colonized, you know, so, because the best thing that a colonizer can do is to capture your mind and change it. And therefore, through cultural imperialism, this issue about us using Africans as a medium of instruction really was about that, to capture our minds and we become good, educated, buzz boys. But at 14 years old, we said, no, we're not going to do that. And one, I mean, at the end of the day, that's practical, I don't have to read far known about the same issue. We, 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 we did it practical and as I said, that was the last time I took a decision to get out with my friends that I'm no longer going to go to school, to any school that is controlled by the apartheid regime. That's why I went out and studied the old levels. So in a sense, for a 14 year, 13 year old, 12 year old, 15 or 16 year old, those are really hard decisions that you have to take. What is incredible as we learn from your book, The Soweto Uprisings, is that this is the school and these are the classrooms yeah. where it all started. And it didn't start on the 16th of June, 1976. It started months earlier when Afrikaans was introduced as the medium of instruction. So you were gonna learn your geography, your history, your maths in Afrikaans. Yeah. What yeah. was it about 14 year olds that you were able to say no? In fact, what transpired, I came to this school in 1975. I was a 13 year old. Remember then in terms of the primary school system, we were using vernacular. So it means I was using a sizzle, therefore as a medium of instruction. And in 1975, when I came here, we were using English. So it so happened that my cohort, the class that I was in, was a class that was made up of probably the best students in the school. So we were compelled to study science. So in 1975, we were using English as a medium of instruction. So, you know, we were youngsters. We all thought we were clever because we were the cream of the school. 
So I was in Form 1A. So whoever was in Form 1B, C, D, E, F for me, mm -mm, I don't have time for you because, <laughs> <laughs> because, because you're not up to my standard intellectual. So we used to compete amongst ourselves, you know. But I must say that if I remember very well, the female students used to beat us. We knew number one, two, three in the class has to be a female student. Yes. It was hard to take, but we were so competitive. So come 1976, suddenly we're using Africans as a medium of instruction. Means maths in Africans, geography in Africans, biology. I think over there, those were our laboratories, you know, so in Africans. And the feedback from the teachers in terms of the tests, they are bad. The marks are bad. I mean, as I said, even at primary school, I was one of the top students. For the first time ever in my life, these are bad marks. I've never experienced that. Everybody else, because this is supposed to be the best class in the school, you know, from 2A, that's when we said, no ways. This is not going to happen to us. As early as March, then we tried to have a word with the principal. We tried to have a word with our teachers. Nothing much happened. Then we decided that no ways, we're not going to carry on with the lessons because who can tell? Our teachers are struggling. Last year, when we were using English as a medium of instructions, they were perfect. They were on top of their game. And most of them went to teacher training colleges using English as a medium of instruction. So they were trained in English. So we could tell that they are struggling mm -hmm. using Africans. So we said, thank you and thank you very much. No more lessons for us. But what we are going to do, we'll be attending school every day until the school is out in the afternoon. We we'll go back home. We'll come back the next day to school. But what happened inside the classroom that's when we were discussing our fate, our future, that what is the way forward? So in March and April, that is what we were discussing. And we used to conduct classes for ourselves inside the classroom using English as a medium of instruction. So were you having all those political discussions at these desks where you're sitting now? Yes, what I can say, if you remember very well, you know, if you are a South African, when people talk about political discussions because of our political legacy, they'll be thinking about the liberation movements. And those, the, those political discussions were only about the education issues. So it wasn't as if there was some political influence from ANC or PAC? As I have said, we had, we're discussing it's what you call cultural imperialism. You know, using Africans, we were trained to become, you know, good by bus boys, yes. you know. So, 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 so in a sense, in terms of cultural imperialism, language is important. And what you do if you are a colonizer, um, I'm so sorry, Helen Zilla says that we must be happy that we were colonized. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my, my, in my life because it was not the best thing that has ever happened to us. Mm. Because the best thing you do as a colonizer, you capture the mind of the colonized by forcing them, you know, through cultural imperialism to do away with their um, languages and adopt your language. So as young as 14 year olds, so we, those were the debates. And, and, your, and your leaders, though, were the 14-year-olds. It wasn't as if people from other political movements were motivating you and influencing you. You were all influenced by one another, weren't you? Yes, as I said, you know, as Nets, we were Nets, as I said, you know, in terms of meritocracy. We knew that we are good, we, we, we are top students. So those issues that really drove us were the bad marks that way. Yes.